right, in two preseason games, what goes into your lineup decisions for these games? Uh, you know, there's a lot that goes in. One is is managing with, with kind of our group of guys, like kind of managing how many games they played in Buffalo, um, when they got back to Rochester, you know, all those different things play into it. Um, you know, you need to have uh, good enough lineups both nights uh, to give yourself a chance to be competitive, but you also want to give games, and, and for some guys, multiple games, to guys that, that you're not as familiar with, uh, that are going to be depth guys for us, that are fighting for roster spots. So, so the, all of those things kind of come into it. Um, and then, and then you make try to make the best decisions that is right for the group. What's your message to those deaf guys before a game like this? Have fun, um, you know. Have fun and compete. You know, I think that, you know, at the start of the year, you want to, as an individual, you want to have fun. You want to embrace your experience. Uh, you, you have an opportunity to be in the second best league in the world. You're fighting for a roster spot. That's, that's a good thing. Don't look at it as a bad thing, and embrace that and have fun with it. And as a team, uh, we just want to start rebuilding that the, the competitiveness of the group and that we are a competitive group everybody's got their own way of competing everybody does it a little differently but that we were a competitive group and that we're hard to play against and you want to start establishing those things uh, as early as you possibly can uh, Cooley will start in that uh, Tukarski has as a minor injury upper body right now um, so Cooley will play tonight um, and Hauser uh, will play tomorrow. Do you have a checklist now going into your fourth season as head coach of like things that you want to get done, whether it's training camp, preseason games, or is it just every season is so different you just kind of handle it one by one? Well, you have a checklist as a coaching staff um, of things that kind of need to get accomplished or things you got to go over. I think it's really important you give them enough information that there's – that there's enough structure that they look like they're organized, but not so much information that they play slow and reactive. So there's a balance to that, and you're always trying to find that balance, you know, because if you don't give them any structure, we look like a shinny hockey team out there. Uh, but if you give them too much in a short period of time, they look like they're robots out there and they're playing too slow. So um, you, you have that, but then you also have to balance it of when are guys arriving you know um, and and were they all in Buffalo were they not and so um, there's so many things in the American League that are outside of your control um, and so we just try to focus on the things we can control and try to give the guys enough to, to allow them to put their best foot forward as individuals Is it kind of like the year, guys coming in guys coming out like, where, like you said who's playing and, and kind of keeping track of where everybody is yes um, training camp is, uh, is demanding on the staff, and it's not just the coaching staff. That goes for our trainers and our equipment managers. And, and you know, we were in Buffalo for, for almost three weeks. You know, and so you're, you have rookie camp, and then you have main camp. And uh, Donnie and his staff are amazing. Um, they, we get to be a part of probably more than most American League staffs are, which is great. Um, but, but you're out there usually for three practices and then potentially a game that night. Um, and so, and yeah, then you have meetings and who's being released or who's being sent to Rochester and there's all those things. And, and, uh, and then guys change numbers and you got new guys in on numbers. You know, I, I got mad at Moose. I heard Moose changed his number. I'm like, Moose and Kisa, like I just, I'm not a number guy, I'm a name guy. So. I'm looking at our board, putting our lineup together. I'm like, I have no idea who these guys even are. I don't even know the numbers. So, um, so there is a lot of moving parts. Um, and it's exciting to be back here and to start to get to be our group um, and to start working with Pacer and Vinny, obviously with new assistant coaches as well, um, and so we can start to do our thing in, in Rochester. That was going to be my next question. How is it going? Obviously, you're running players. You're just trying to build something all over again. You're also building it with two new guys. How's it it's been great. Uh, I'm, I'm thrilled uh, with the hires. Um, Pacer was an easy one um, because we had spent so much time already together in player development, and then the fact that he lived in Rochester, he was here more than a lot of player development guys are. So um, to me, that was a, an easy decision, uh, just as 
the only question was, did he want to be in player development or did he want to coach? So I was thrilled that he decided he wanted to coach. Uh, he's a great person. Uh, he was a great leader in the American League, and, and he's going to be a great mentor and role model for our guys. Uh, and then Vinny, um, that one was harder to find, right? Because you didn't know if you'd be able to replace some of what Pekka brought to our staff in terms of his NHL experience and the playing experience and things like that. And so to have that with Vinny um, and then to have someone who's got so much passion and energy and competitiveness for the game, for coaching, um, has been really fun. Um, so it's been, that's probably the benefit of, of camp when you have a new staff and you spend so much time together uh, that you start to really get to know each other really well already. Probably a thing we'll figure out down the road. But when Donnie talks about it, it's a pressure to have, it's a privilege to have the pressure of the Sabres and being expected to make the playoffs. Do you guys feel pressure here to also win? I know it's development and all those things, but coming off such a strong season, is there pressure again to be successful and win? And if so, is that, again, do you, do you view that as a privilege? Um, yes. I'd say that simple answer is yes to all of that. Uh, I love that, that quote. I've used that uh, a lot, especially when I was at the national program, because there certainly is a privilege to be part of that. Um, and, and pressure is, it, it, it just means that you're doing something that matters in your life, right? It, it, if you have no pressure on you as a human, you're usually not doing things that are either very exciting, challenging, rewarding, or things that maybe you're not passionate about. Um, our guys have a great passion for the game of hockey. Uh, they, they love being Amherst. A lot of them are trying to become Sabres and NHL players. Um, and, and there's a pressure to that, and that, that's a great thing. That means they're doing something that is really important in their life and in our life collectively. And then, yeah, there's a pressure to win. Um, I believe, and I've said this since I got hired, winning is part of development. And, and I think that people didn't think that's the way it was going to be in Rochester um, with the, some of the changes and with going really young. And that's not been the case. We've had two very successful seasons. We didn't get to the ultimate prize. Um, but we've been able to develop and win. And there is a pressure to do that. Um, and, and that's a good thing. Um, and this year is no different. And there will be more of a target on us with what we accomplished last year. And we need to embrace that uh, and know that more often than not, we're going to get our opponents' uh, best efforts. Uh, the beauty in the North Division, though, is, is people give that almost every night anyway, um, especially with how many times we play Utica and Syracuse. Um, you know, the, the dislike for each other is pretty strong, and so you're usually getting each other's best. Well, sir, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. Duffer, are you good? Duffer? I'm good. I'm good. Duffer? I'm good for uh, noon hour. Duffer, you can't just sit out here and listen and not ask questions. That's, that's the last time we're going to allow that. Uh, it will be the law firm of Mersh and Mersh, and it, it will be centered by Mason Yapst. So, um, yeah, Mersh and Mersh, we'll put them on a line together tonight, which will be a pretty special moment uh, for all of us, but even more so for, uh, for those two and their family.